Hey, welcome everybody to Getting a Grip on the Michigan Business Network. I am, of course, Mike Maddox, your host. So happy to be with you here. I'm so glad you're listening to the podcast or viewing the podcast uh, today and joining us. I've got a terrific guest, a guy I've known for a couple of years, but I feel like I've known him a lot longer. Um, <laughs> Yeah, his name is Joe Geraldo, professional EOS implementer. Joe, welcome to the program. Awesome to be here, Mike. It's it's. I, this is I didn't like mean the... in a bad way, like it's been longer. <laughs> I meant you and I went through boot camp together, so and we've we've kind of shared and collaborated uh, coming out of EOS boot camp um, as we've launched practices. So I feel like we've known, gotten to know each other at a deeper level than you typically would in just two or three years. I. Uh... I, I still remember that day <laughs> walking in there, right? That with that boot camp, and I do remember you. You and I got. I'm dying to know: Are you always calm, cool, and collected? Is that your? <laughs> is that your thing? Does anything get a rise out of you, or what? Yeah, you'd have to ask my kids that question because they would. They I don't think calm, cool, and collected are the adjectives they would use. No. Um, so yeah, the answer is no. I'm not always calm, cool, and collected. <laughs> It's all an act, Joe. It's all an act for the camera. Well, you, you do it well, my friend. You do it well. Well, thanks. Yes, I appreciate that. So, Joe, you know, folks listening to us, we're both EOS coaches, EOS implementers. We all come from different places to get here. Um, I think they'd be fascinated to hear a little bit about your story and what led you here, your entrepreneurial journey uh, of the, through your career. So can you can you hit some of the highlights and, and, and tell the folks about uh, what brought you to this yeah. point? You know, I think uh, the only way I could start is really with uh, two amazing people, my Filipino immigrant parents that um, when out of wedlock, I was coming, <laughs> and they oh. and and uh, and they they really wanted. They're very comfortable in the Philippines. They're from the Philippines, and um, you know, there's a lot of haves and have-nots there. And and he, they had the blessings of of having at least on my mother's side. Um, and my father had not. He 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 did not have a lot. Literal grass hut living. His, he lost his father when um, in a mine, working in a mine. So you imagine there's not a lot of regulations in the Philippines for coal mining. And mm -hmm. uh, he paid the ultimate price for that. And, um, and so they really wanted to create something of their own for this new family that they were having. So they, they within weeks of knowing I was coming, they uh, got citizenship in Canada. So 53 years ago now, uh, they came over. And, um, and you know, I, if, if I think of my mom and dad, typical immigrants, very hardworking, um, but love to love. Um, the family was everything. And so real two things that, you know, being a Filipino Canadian growing up, the two anchoring moments for me are, um, always have the humility to start from the bottom and you're going to find you're going to rise to the top. That's something my dad always um, reinforced in us, never be too good for anything. And, and the other was when it comes to the people you love, love them unconditionally. There should be nothing that should affect your love. And, 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 I, and that really resonated with me um, because as, as an immigrant, as, as a Canadian growing up in Canada, connection um, really came from family. Um, you kind of felt like an outsider just for not looking like everybody else, and it took some time. And, uh, and so with that, uh, those two things, what I was finding, I was making connections beyond my family. And, and I was seeing deeper relationships really, really uh, come through. And because I had that work ethic of wanting to go, uh, willing to start at the bottom, I, I went into jobs with zero ego. I was just really grateful they were they saw value in me, yeah. in in being able to be brought brought on board. So I, I had the privilege of working in a mine, uh, uh, ironically, uh, and in Hudson Bay. Uh, Flint Flon, Manitoba, and uh, 
and 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 ended up working at, at and rose to the top in terms of just systems. I I I really um, here's what really hit me um, when in Hudson Bay uh, it was called the Killer Mine of Canada, uh, national news. The it's called Harvard, Killer Mine. The Killer Mine of Canada by. Uh, the national news, which wow. uh, which is our version of 2020, yeah. uh, uh, and the reason being was it was losing 13 people to critical injuries a year. Wow! Right? Uh, yeah. And one story really um, connected with me and really helped me find ways to be better. And um, there was uh, one of our our mining operators was pouring 40 tons of liquid metal. So think of like a big pot or ladle and an yeah. overhead crane and you're in it. And the story is that as he was pouring um, into another crucible that hold 40 tons of material, the one thing about molten metal is when liquid comes in contact with it, 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 it explodes it expands at, at a rate of 10,000 times. So okay. something like even a can of pop thrown into something like that would be just like a grenade, right? Yeah. So what had happened here was he poured, he poured it in and a column of molten uh, shot from the crucible and engulfed his entire, um, his, his entire uh, uh, bin that he was sitting in. And what wow. was really awful about it was it took about three weeks for him to uh, expire from his injuries. Oh, man. And think, man. Of, so this is a mining town, right? So like right. I would fly there from Toronto to help with their systems. But, uh, but this town, there was 5,000 people that um, lived in Flin Flon and 1,500 of them worked at the mine. Wow. So losses like that had names to them, had people we loved, people yeah. we cared about, right? So it, it really rallied safety. And, and the gift in that for me was I was seeing that, you know, the, these people had amazing skills. Like imagine you could do controlled blasts in the ground and, and, and make sure it doesn't, doesn't cave in and you're taking it like it's, it's some of the most risky work you can imagine. And, yeah. and they put in practices that make these things all possible. Right. And, 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 and it's an amazing thing. Yeah. And, and so I, I got to see how systems and clear communication so if a new regulation changes that we alert everyone that is impacted by that and we help each other um, change our practices on the fly so that yeah. we can continue to work every day i just love that idea of being able to do something that is risky and and master it i yeah. just love i just love the notion of that which and, is at the heart of any entrepreneurial business. I mean, it, it may not be as risky as molten metal, but yes. there's risk inherent in any entrepreneurial effort. Um, and so that you, you're drawn, you were drawn to that. Oh my gosh, it was, and, it, it, it hooked me, right? Yeah, and I, and I love the foundation that was laid by your folks, which was, you know, don't, you know, check your ego, be willing to start anywhere. Be willing to add value. Find a way to add value. It doesn't matter where you're starting at, and love other people. Like reach out mm -hmm. and, and and connect. Those are skills. That foundation. I mean, kudos to your parents for laying that foundation. That life experience in the mine, you know, is is another. Built. I can see that building block. I never knew that story. I, I didn't know that. That's an that's an amazing <laughs> yeah. building block. And what led you to. The entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurial coaching and entrepreneurial efforts i'm sure that you know took you through your career it it is uh it 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 was it was such a gift um in in fact at first i thought it was about it was about teaching me to be a, a better um 
worker with with skills that you know could balance spreadsheets and create policies and and all these great things that did happen that did materialize um but those were only tools that really helped deepen connection and relationship yeah. like i i saw the power of trust yeah like it's it's amazing when you really have that moment of strong trust in a team uh the hesitation the errors because you're t you take responsibility and ownership for the success of all your movements not just your own and i just love that idea of humility i love that idea of finding maximum performance something that would be impossible if you tried to do it on your own and but you are all these you lessons think, joe is this what led these are the pieces that through your the different positions you've held companies you worked for and the experience you gained ultimately led you to be a business coach to be an eos coach an eos implementer and a coach i mean is that is that how it all culminated because i see that picture pretty clearly in your mind do you see it that way funny i don't you know huh. it, it it was at first it was all about becoming the best version of myself and and doing amazing things and i didn't i although i had a value of humility i think when it came to performance uh my high performer ego got in the way and and, and really that's where coaching really started to help me see that there's there's something deeper uh, there's something deeper than just being a high performer there's uh and and coaching really especially eos right like i mean i think i was enamored by the initial because i worked pretty hard like uh in in the companies that i did uh, like uh, i took a lot of my knowledge and and saw a company go from zero to four hundred thousand current current users of a software that we that we designed so I saw massive scale. So when I when I was introduced to EOS and it had this promise of you could make a living working two days a week, I just I I, I thought that was just that because I I never knew anything but ninety yeah. hour work weeks. Yeah, right? yeah, that, that was your frame, your frame of reference. That that's yeah, fascinating, and, and you yeah. know. You're also touching on what I, another reason I wanted to, I, I was so eager to have you on the program and you and I've had conversations around what we call the abundance mindset. Mm -hmm. And, and I, and I'm hearing elements of that in your background. So what, why do you define that? Like if for the mm -hmm. listeners, if they're not familiar with that phrase, we use it in the U S all the time, but what does it, what does it mean? Well, yeah, I, I would love to help you how it, how it meant something to me was in that software company. Um, so what happened was uh, I spent about uh, $3 million developing a, a software platform. And I had one customer. <laughs> I had one customer, right? So I, I was looking at the burn rate. And it's I'm, gonna be, I'm like, it's going to be expensive <laughs> software for that customer. <laughs> no, right? Yeah. And unfortunately, they weren't generous enough to cover it all. <laughs> but uh, so I knew we needed to do something fast. Uh, it wasn't going to be sustainable. And it was 2008. <laughs> so just at the cusp of us hitting a huge recession. So this software needed to be loaded onto servers to exist, right? Because it was an ERP level software design mm -hmm. and needed to be on software. So right when the recession hit and I was working a lot with automotive organizations and manufacturing organizations and utilities, uh, the, big, the big hurdle I was getting was, listen, we're selling parts of our business right now and not spending $50,000 on a, on a server yeah. bank. Yeah. Right. So that got me pretty desperate. As you can imagine, I'm $3 million in <laughs> yeah. and what, what do I do? So 
desperate mindset? Do I start selling this at pennies, right? Like all these things were, were starting to kind of crop up. And I heard Simon Sinek speak, would start with why. And mm -hmm. it started showing me what abundance meant. So coming back to your original question, what I learned abundance meant was if, 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 if people believe in the same thing, then the boats, then the tide can rise all boats and, and everyone can win, right? That's that whole idea of abundance. And that's what that meant to me in that, that situation. And what, what we saw, so what my amazing team came to me and they said, hey, Joe, you ever hear of YouTube? YouTube was just coming out right back there yeah. around, okay? And then they go, you know why YouTube can pull up all these videos, great? They work on the cloud. And what happens is you have a bunch of servers all dedicated to do really micro things really well. And it just culminates together all at the right moment. And then it gives you a streaming video. And, and they said, why don't we do that with our system? So when they decide, when we decided that, and our live calculations were happening live. And, and I was able to go to that same person and say, rather than, rather than pay for a $50,000 um, $50, server, server yeah. why, don't, why don't we do it for dollars a month? Yeah. And I'll, co I'll cover everything. I'll make yeah. sure it's secure. I'll make sure that, and that was our turning point. So that abundant mindset seed hit there and it, it helped me see how you could hit scale. And that's how we, we careened to, over the next 10 years, up to 400,000 concurrent users were leveraging the system that wow. I, could, I couldn't whittle it into one. <laughs> <laughs> that's fascinating. And we're gonna, I'm going to break there so we can get some commercials in and we're going to come back talk more about the abundance mindset because it's 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 everywhere in in this EOS world we live in and I know you and I have have just been so grateful for that I want to talk about that talk about much more around what EOS has meant for you so don't go anywhere everybody we are coming back right after this with much more uh and we will be right back after the commercial break Hey, welcome back to Getting a Grip on the Michigan Business Network. This show airs every week, and we hope that you are joining us and getting something out of it. If you are, like the show, share the show, um, you know, tell your friends about the show, gather your family around in the evenings with fire and popcorn and listen. To, I, I don't know. You're not going to do that. Anyway, we're glad you're here. Mike Maddox, your host. My guest is Joe Geraldo, professional EOS implementer out of Canada, Ottawa, and uh, not Ottawa, Ontario. Yeah, Windsor. Windsor, Windsor Ontario, right across the yeah, pond right from across the river, <laughs> from Detroit. <laughs> so, and I said Ottawa. I don't know why, but uh, in in Windsor, Ontario. And Joe, before the break, we were talking about your back, fascinating background, um, and the lessons you learned early on from your parents. Lessons you learned in the in the uh, mine that you worked in, uh, and kind of what led to the coach you are today. We were starting to talk about the abundance mindset. You talked about your software entrepreneurial efforts, an amazing story there. Um, I, one of the things that I'm personally amazed by, in fact, I had a conversation this morning about this, is just how that abundance mindset permeates the EOS coaching world. Have you have you seen that too? And, and in what way has that showed up for you? It, um, it really showed for me, EOS and being a professional EOS implementer really showed me the depth of abundance. I think I just learned an example, like scale. Um, but that definitely isn't everything, is it? Like, I mean, it's not why we became coaches, right? right. Like, we, we, we're, we're trying to help every one of our clients get everything that they want from their business. And, you know, we're we coming on our third year. Is that what we're coming yeah. on or our second? Yeah, they, it was are. September of 22. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to share this stat with you. I wrote it down um, before we were yeah, to 21. talk for this. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So in that time, okay, I went all out with that 
scaled mentality that you, you, you heard me share you with, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be bursting at the seams. I'm just gonna just figure this sucker out. So I'm gonna give you my stat. Seventeen clients decided to go with me to begin, right? After I, we did a ninety minute meeting with them, eight of them are active right now. Okay. One of them graduated and eight of them canceled or postponed. It came in all different forms, yeah. right? Like I think I, I'm sure you've heard it too, right? And that's where I really, I really went, okay, how, how th these are people that said, I want everything I want from my business. Why would they give up on themselves? Right? Yeah. What, what, what was it? And, and that, I really f honed in on that. And one of the things I saw that I was doing was I was owning their shit. <laughs> so yeah. when I would see them get stuck, I would start seeing me inside get frustrated and go, why aren't they seeing it? Why won't they, why, why do they keep putting that in front of them? Yeah. Right. And, 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 but that'd be in my head and then it would just go away. And then, and then, and then undoubtedly at some point in the period, they'd go, Hey Joe, I, you know what, man, it's not you. It's just our situation. This just happened right now. Uh, there's no way we could concentrate on EOS. We, we're we're going to have to pause for right now. And, and I just felt like something was missing. Like I was biting my tongue and, and quite frankly, I was feeling awful. Like I was feeling like I failed them. I was feeling, I was feeling like, um, and, and that's when humility s served me a little bit better. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's not for me to own. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's hard as a coach. That's been a lesson learned. I can relate to what you're talking about, Joe, for me and not owning. I mean, we want the most for our clients, like you said. We want them to get breakthrough. We want them to live the EOS life. We know that it's possible. We know that it's in front of them. But it's hard when when they're going through the the struggle of the work of it to not take it upon yourself to try to push them through it, which it, yeah. Um, it's counterproductive to try to do that. And but it's hard because you you do care and you have a background and you have skills and you have business experience and you've been through some of this stuff before to not jump in and go, I'm gonna solve this problem for you. Which yeah. doesn't, you know, it's like the old, it's the you know, teach a teach a person to fish or give them a fish, right? I mean exactly. it's the same, same concept. But totally. that's a, that's been a lesson learned for me in my journey too. I I can totally relate to that. Yeah, and and so and and I I was seeing the pattern repeat with all of us, right? We all talk about ideal clients, and you know they've got it. So what I was seeing was they they need to be in that ideal mindset. And as you know, we have these QCEs, these quarterly events, and 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 a lot of our our community like share things that have impacted them in these breakout rooms. I don't know about you, but a lot of those things, I really look forward to those. They change me forever, right? They just help oh, me see something from a whole other angle. Well, there was this one and it was on positive intelligence. And so I'm gonna, Shirzad Carmine is the author of the book. Recommend it. Mike, if you haven't read it, please read it. It's pretty amazing. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna butcher it, but I'm gonna do my best to give you the lesson that I, that I learned that really helps with mindset. And I want you to think that we've got a survival, like, you know, we talk about desperate, right? If you're desperate, there's a certain mindset that comes with that, right? Yeah. You're going to act differently than if you're not des desperate, right? Right. What, well, so what, what they say is that's your survival mind, okay? So that its only job is to warn you and be right. That's all it cares about. Whether whether there's actually a risk there or not, it it doesn't care. It just is going to scream at you and say right. you should be on high alert. So the it idea triggers, is it triggers the fight or flight. I mean, yes. it's, it's there for a reason. Yes. So think about this: you and I are whipping through the Amazon, and we're we're 
barreling through that Amazon and we're just like, look at this place. This is amazing. We get to the end of the day and we set up camp and we're sitting around the fire and, you know, we're warming our hands. Can't believe the day. And then all of a sudden the leaves rustle. What's the first thought that comes to your mind? Yeah, uh, some kind of massive predator, right? <laughs> right. And, and so even it, you just describing that, you know, the anxiety level started to just go <laughs> off. And that, that's that fight or flight, you know, triggering. You in got the brain. it, right? So even in the Amazon forest, one out of ten times it is a tiger. Yeah. Nine out of the ten times it's just the wind. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right, but the, but the reaction's the same. You, you, your yes. brain doesn't know; it just is warning you. So that that's interesting. Exactly. So you put that out of positive intelligence. It starts so, with that. Yeah, the whole idea of that is, yes, let's hear it, right? But and then when and then let's slow our mind down and let's get yeah. really intentional. And then let's really start shifting to the positive. And it, it's a whole practice. I, I've been working on it. I still do it every day. And it has really helped me with that abundant mindset. It's also helped me when I start hearing things that are holding people back. It, start, it starts letting me go, that's just the fucking wind, Joe. Hmm. <laughs> that's just the wind. Yeah. Let's, let's help them see what's really, what really matters in this moment. What yes. really matters, so we get to the truth, right? Yeah, and you know, it's so interesting to me, and I, I think you know, because we've talked, I don't know, I've talked about this on the program too, but um, if listeners don't know, I've done a lot of work over the years with organizations that specialize in helping people with anxiety disorder, mm -hmm. um, chronic acute anxiety, panic attacks, agoraphobia, OCD, um, those kind of those kind of things, and that, and and I've battled that in my life, and and found tools that that work. But um, so when you talk about that fight or flight, slowing your mind down, the 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 problem with fight or flight, I mean, fight the fight or flight response is there for like we talked about for very good reason. It's there to yes. make you aware, get your body ready. If yes. there is a real threat, it 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 hardens the the larger muscles. It shallow the breathing becomes more shallow. You become prepared to either run or do battle. Yeah. The thing about it is, though, your rational mind starts to shut down by, by design yes. so that you, you don't have time to think rationally. You just react. Exactly. And so um, when it, when the threat isn't something, it's not a tiger. It's the wind. Yes. You have to you have to consciously undo that because the body take, takes time to respond. Yes. So you have to slow your mind down, like you said. Um, and that that's applicable to business. That's applicable in relationships and family, in society, uh, and it's a learned skill. Sports, sports. Right? You like talk about the, the great athletes, right? Getting yeah. in the zone, they block everything out. They slow their breathing. Navy SEALs, you know, elite warriors do the same thing. They learn to slow everything down. Yes, and guess what? When the when the danger is real, you're more prepared than ever. Yeah. That's what's beautiful about it. That is what's absolutely beautiful about trusting and slowing down your mind. And that, to me, is abundant mindset. That mastery of being able to not see tigers every time yeah. you hear the wind rustle, but really getting slow and getting real intentional and going what really matters now. What does it that matters? And let's let's spend the time to find that. And and that's where I find that's where you find truth. And when you find truth, everything else is just a distraction. And yeah. if you can stay focused, we're we're a bunch of guys that just all we do is is help our teams focus their limited energy. And you focus it on the truth, what is that going to do for your business? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's a that's a great lesson learned and, and a great reminder for those of us in, in the coaching business, especially coaching EOS. Um, I, I'm I'm interested. You know, I know I know the impact EOS has had for your clients because I've seen it with my clients. I've seen it with thousands of other clients. I've seen it everywhere. Um, I'm curious, and I always like to when I have another implementer on ask this question: How has EOS impacted you personally? Are there tools? That you pulled out of it um, has the framework 
change the way that you approach how you do things, um, kind of flipping it on its head and saying, how has it impacted Joe Geraldo? Um, what would you, what are some of your thoughts on that? Um, do you remember the tool? Uh, one of our tools in our tool built is getting everything you want from your business. You yeah. Remember that one, right? Yeah. Well, there's one nugget in there that really just helped help me uh, in, in, in this journey. And it's starting with the end in mind. So, you know, the promise is two days a week, right? That's your full practice and, and you're, you're, you're maximizing profitability and all that. That's a healthy business, right? I, uh, you're a software guy like me. You remember the term MVP, minimal viable product? Mm -hmm. Well, I feel as professional EOS implementers, we're on a journey to minimal viable practice, right? And in that, in that journey, we're trying to get to that destination where we've got all the clients that we love, we're making a difference in the world and all those things. But what do you do in between? What's your mindset in between? And that's where start with the end in mind. So at about the two year mark, what I did was I started creating boundaries around my time. Mm -hmm. So Tuesdays and Thursdays are the only availabilities for my EOS practice. For, right? for session days with clients. Those are the days, session days with clients. you're in session room all day with yes. clients. And then, I, and then I said, you know, when my practice is, is healthy, I want time for my family. Yeah. Guess what? That's all my evenings. So I've got that hardwired around my practice. Also, I want the time to work out. I want the time to eat healthy. I want the time to meditate. I want the time to learn. Guess what? Yeah. I've carved that into every day as well. And I said, so by what's, what's been really neat by setting these compartments up in, and, and, and living my life with the end in mind. So I've created all these compartments. What I saw the minute I, I did that is another thing we teach, nature abhors a vacuum. These spaces started filling ideally with what I intended them to have. Yeah. So that's really what that's I... Really, that's really interesting. Yeah, and if, you, if you're not familiar, if you're listening, you don't know that tool, Joe described it fairly well. I mean, it's basically a simple practice of to asking yourself, what is the end result you're looking for? Then working backwards from there in, in a sequential step-by-step -step fashion. So if the end result in this case was, I want to be in session days, two days a week, because I want time for other passions. I want time for my family. Uh, I want, you know, I want time to live my best life. If that's the end, then how do you get in session two days a week? Well, you got to get some clients. Well, how many clients do I need? Uh, and what kind of clients? That's the next step. So you get the idea. You're working your way backwards. And what you're saying is a big part of it was the mindset component of it. That's right. And having those hard wire, having the discipline to say, I, I'm not going to do a Monday session, right? I'm not going to yeah. do an evening session. I'm not going to take calls after in the evening because I'm those are hardware right. for my family. Yes. Um, and that's that's what you call proactive and intentional. And it's it's easy to bend it. And I was telling a client, I was teaching this to a client the other day, and I said that. The, the reason it's so easy that we all get overloaded, like when you talk to executives and you talk to any, you talk to anybody in business, everybody says the same thing. They have way too much to do. They're overloaded. There's no time. They're swamped. They're buried. They're burned out. Part of the reason for that is that we all have this tendency to say yes to little things. And the thing we're saying yes to seems very small, but in aggregate, when you add them all up, it's overwhelming. Right. So you have to be very disciplined about this practice. Yes. I have seen by creating a sacred and treating it as sacred, what I see is the people that are meant to do the same. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. They start planning around that space because they don't want to miss out. This is my time. This is what I'm gonna. This is what I get. You're setting yourself up. You're making yeah. sure you're 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 your best self to come into the space, and that 
is a lot that reduces stress too because it's not all up to me anymore i don't right. gotta own other people's shit. we're working we're working together instead right yeah it's just it's this very similar phenomenon to when when i coach on delegating to elevate one of the reasons people don't delegate is they feel that um it, it's just like they're putting too much on other people but what you find is if by doing that, you're teaching others how to delegate, and you're yes. ele- and, and the, the entire the the tide the entire tide rises, right? You get everyone yes. operating at a higher level. Um, study after study has shown that in business today, uh, we executives and leaders tend to operate levels below where they should be. Well, that's because they don't know how to delegate. They don't know how to be proactive about their time. They don't know how to yes. say no. Um, they don't know how to simplify. Right? Those are all good reasons. But yes. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. Hey, we are almost out of time, I, and I don't want to let you go. It's amazing. It flies yeah. by. Man, this one did, too. I just love talking to Joe. And, and you, you and I could do this all day. Maybe, yeah. maybe we'll do a marathon session one day. We'll just... I don't know if anybody will listen to it. It'd be we fun. Go. We'll just go. We'll see how, how long we can go. Well, at least we'll have a good time. We'll, we'll have, have we'll a good time. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. But I don't want to let you go without asking. I love to I love to ask my guests about what things that motivate them. So what motivates Joe? Like is it like some people have talked about a song that they that they play or a movie scene or a poem. Uh, you know, there's been different answers. Um, I'm curious, you know, is there something that comes to mind for you, Joe, that, you know, when I ask what, what motivates you, what kind of gets your blood going? Um, you know, what, what is that for you? Yeah, I, the first thing that popped in my mind when you said that was the movie Rudy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just love the idea of ordinary people willing to never give up on themselves to do something that they should never ever no business. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah. I think there's something about that isn't it it's just so mad magical so I'm gonna pick Rudy buddy that's a Go great Rudy, answer Rudy, Rudy. yeah <laughs> and that was the first time anybody has given me that answer and I couldn't agree more um one of my favorite all-time movies and uh just a great story and the fact that it was a true story um exactly. or based on a true story yeah. makes it even better Hey, thanks, Joe. Um, if folks want to get a hold of you, we will have your uh, website listed with the podcast. Uh, do you want to give a, any other way to reach you other than the website? I would love to thank you, Mike. I'd love to thank you for, you know, doing this passionate uh, project through this podcast and really just being curious about our community and and being able to share it. I think this is a really great idea and worthwhile. Well, thanks, man. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I love doing it. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks, Joe, for being on. And uh, we will catch you on the flip side. <laughs>